My name is Beth Nielsen and I'm an assistant professor in civil and environmental engineering. This is Curtis Creek. This is one of the places we've spent the last number of years working. We've really been interested in looking at how heat and mass move through streams. That includes not just what you see here on the surface, but what also exchanges with the, the local groundwater. We are interested in how heat exchanges and what the in-stream temperatures end up as as a result. We are interested in understanding how solutes or constituents or pollutants move through the stream, how it interacts with the groundwater, also how it decays, how it sorbs, and pretty much how water and mass move through the system. We have various locations along the stream where we are measuring discharge. We're also measuring temperatures uh, at a number of different places. And we have sensors um, at prime locations where we're interested in thermal diversity or thermal heterogeneity. We also have uh, wells placed adjacent to the stream where we're looking at how the groundwater surface elevations are different than the water surface elevations of the channel. This tells us something about groundwater exchanges. In certain sections we've seen that there have been beaver dams built as those beaver dams change over time because of them potentially failing or because the um, an increase in the dam height you see a lot of deposition behind these dams and scour at different locations so it completely changes where water moves and how it moves. Um, so my name is Milada and I'm a postdoc in Beth's lab. So this is GPS um, and uh, we use it to get a topographic data of the channel and the banks. So the plan is to uh, build a model. So we're going to build a hydraulic model that's one use for it. But we also can look at the changes, especially in the downstream ridge that's influenced by the beaver dams. And you can compare if you have surveys for multiple years, you can um, use this really cool tool and compare the geomorphic change and just the change in the channel. We also injected a, a fluorescent tracer today. That tracer basically gives us a way to measure how something that's conservative moves with the water and through this particular reach. We measure concentrations downstream and this allows us to understand or infer some information about how much groundwater we're gaining or losing and how long that dye gets held up in various locations. In the end, this is used in modeling efforts to understand residence time distributions within the system and how that impacts fate of various solutes. I'm Noah Schmodel. I'm a graduate student in Civil Environmental Engineering Department here at Utah State University. And at Curtis Creek, where we are right now, I did some of my master's work up here. We were looking at really where the water is going, how it relates to the stream, what is contributing to some of the stream flow, and then where the water goes once it enters the stream. Here we're, we have an instrument in the water to measure the dye we were looking at before. So we put some fluorescent dye into the stream and we're measuring it downstream at the downstream boundary condition of our study reach. And by doing this, we can look at some of the physical characteristics the stream has, meaning how quickly is the water moving through and where is some of the water getting hung up? You refer to that as eddies before and also within the stream bed itself, some of the cobble that we looked at as we were coming down. So when we do dye studies, what you see is that the main channel flow, you see the high concentrations moving through, and then you see this very slow diffusion into the areas at the edges of the channel. And you see that here in this beaver dam, where you've got the dye moving through the center and then slowly diffusing out to the sides. In a few minutes here, what we'll see is that you now have dye left on the sides, and the bulk of the flow has moved the mass out. My name is Cami Snow and I'm an environmental engineering master's student here at Utah State University. The research that I've been involved with has primarily dealt with in-stream water quality and one of the things that we like to, to look at to gauge whether a stream is healthy or not is the temperature of the water. Since temperature is important for stream health because it can affect what can live in the stream, you know, what kind of chemical processes can happen. If a beaver moves into the stream, then it can change what kind of heat fluxes can go into it, like how much solar radiation can go into the water and warm the stream. 
So I'm looking at the effects that solar radiation can have when you've got beaver introduced to a stream. So the reason why we're interested in understanding where the water goes and how the, the various constituents within the water behave, or even the in-stream temperatures, is because this impacts what's living within the water. Any sort of aquatic um, species that are, are trying to survive and are dependent upon either the dissolved oxygen concentrations, the in-stream temperatures. So we need to be able to predict over space and time how this changes. If we can do that, we're able to determine how we can change our behavior or how the system could potentially be changed to be able to meet the needs of these aquatic species. In the context of policy, there are the Clean Water Act and the Total Maximum Daily Load Program requires us to meet in-stream water quality standards. And these in-stream water quality standards are dependent upon the designated use of the water body. This designated use is dependent upon somebody classifying a particular use for that system. Sometimes it's a cold water fishery, sometimes it is for agricultural uses. And we are trying to essentially figure out how to change our behavior to meet those standards.